The story is, uh, it actually takes place 2,000 years ago um, in, in a time when voyaging ha has stopped. And it takes place um, in kind of the central Pacific um, uh, at, at a place where, where, um, where the voyaging actually uh, had stopped for 1,000 years. And it's the story of a teenage girl named Moana, uh, the daughter of a chief, um, who grows up on this village where they haven't voyaged for a thousand years. And um, she ends up uh, going on a quest uh, to save her people, where she teams up with the demigod Maui. The two of them together uh, form a friendship and, um, and save the world. I was intrigued by the whole area of the South Pacific. I had never actually been beyond Hawaii, but I had read novels that were set there, and I saw paintings that were painted there, and it seemed like just such a beautiful landscape. I didn't, I'd never been there, and I, I thought, let me dig a little deeper. So I started reading Polynesian mythology, which I had no idea what was in it, and I discovered this whole rich vein of storytelling and characters, just these bigger-than-life stories, myths, and uh, in particular, the story of Maui. We actually um, had to actually go visit these places. Um, yes, we were forced, I tell you, forced to spend two or three weeks in some of the most beautiful islands in the world, in uh, Tahiti and Morea and Samoa and Fiji. And uh, our development department did an amazing job of setting up a trip that was not a boondoggle and that was not a bunch of drinks with the little umbrellas yeah, we, in them, but actually talking to people connected to the culture, really getting a deeper sense of what it was all about there, what their values were, what they considered important, what it was like to live on an island, the traditions that built the islands and themselves, we heard this phrase, you've got to know your mountain. If you don't know your mountain, you don't know who you are. And, and your whole lineage and your background is important. You carry it with you. So we, we took all that stuff to heart, really. We learned a lot about the history of navigation and, and the migration of the South Pacific and what an incredible accomplishment that was uh, yeah, thousands using, of years ago before the European explorers and, and before the Vikings. Um, they use this process called dead reckoning to find their way um, throughout uh, the, the South Pacific. And, um, there and no instruments, they had to sail using the stars and the currents, and they managed to pick their way across. And, and in a great feat, like one of the greatest nautical feats in human history, really. And we didn't know that before we went there. Uh, and we really, when we came back, we refashioned the story to highlight that, that they were the world's great, greatest, uh, uh, you know, nautical wayfinders, you know, the voyagers, that we, we built the whole story around that. The character Moana, really, it was Ron who came up with the idea of well, what if we had a girl named Moana, which means ocean, as the heart of the story. So yeah, we based uh, our new story around the idea of a young teenage girl who, um, who has, uh, has this uh, sense of voyaging in her blood, it's in her DNA, but she lives in a world where uh, they don't do that anymore. And, uh, and she has to come to terms with that and figure out kind of who she is and, and what she's meant to do, what she's meant to be and it kind of took off from there. Yeah, we really wanted to take advantage of the fact that we learned that there was this thousand year gap where they had been voyaging in the Pacific, and for a thousand years those transoceanic voyages stopped around the area of Samoa, Fiji, and Tonga. And, and still to this day, historians and archeologists don't know really why they stopped and then why they resumed. But we thought, what if we could work that into our story, that they are not going on, and that our heroine could be one of the key reasons why they get going again. And so it just seemed like a, an interesting and cool way to weave historical fact with our sort of created world. Maui, when Moana meets him, is kind of having a rough time, and, uh, and he's lost his magical fish hook. He's been defeated by, um, by a, a monster that, that um, was actually more powerful than he was. He, he's had to come to terms with, with all these things, and, um, and he needs some, uh, some restoration. He needs, he needs someone to kind of help, help bring him back and help him find himself again. Yeah, there's a, there's a quality we heard about in the Pacific called your mana, and your mana is your power, your chi, your, and, and in some ways Maui, when we meet him in the story, his mana is a little off. He doesn't quite have the mana that he had, and through the course of the story, Moana helps him kind of regain that, uh, the thing that he lost. The idea came that um, we could actually make the ocean a character in the movie. We could bring it to life, um, show how it's thinking, show its emotions. Uh, it's a little like the carpet in Aladdin, uh, but much uh, bigger, much wetter, I think. But um, so, so, um, so, so the, the ocean is a kind of overriding um, character in this whole movie. It has a plan. It has, it has, um, it has something that it wants, and 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 it chooses Moana.
one is the chosen one. As Dwayne became more involved with the movie and, and Ali, e, um, their personalities are so uh, so dynamic and fun and entertaining that, that uh, the story and the two characters actually took on, I think, qualities of, of, of both of them and that, that really infused a lot of the fun dynamics in terms of their relationship. Yeah, when we, when we started, you know, Maui was so reluctant to go on this voyage and, and he was kind of a curmudgeon and all that. And to make a curmudgeon appealing and charismatic and likable is, is a real challenge. And, but once Dwayne started recording and really brought him to life and even when he was sort of bragging, it was so much fun. And yet he also could have this vulnerability under all that. So under the swagger was sort of this uh, tenderer side to him. And, Dwayne was just a marvel at capturing that. And Ali'i too, she just has these reserves. And Ali'i Cravalho, who's doing the voice of Moana, is, is herself fearless, just diving into this whole enterprise is, is crazy for someone who's 14 years old to, to jump into this and be acting with somebody like uh, Dwayne Johnson. It's, it's been amazing. Us Not Sure is our producer. We're so lucky to have her. It was, I was the one who asked her to do this, <laughs> but she was actually in charge of development at the time. She has a great background in that she's, she existed in the world of documentaries around the world. She had done things in India and various places, so she has a, an amazing sense of world culture. Very early on, we thought Maui's tattoos would animate, and, and, and that would be a lot of fun, and that's something that, that we could do. Then the idea came along that to give Maui actually a special tattoo, um, uh, a little version of himself, kind of like his own conscience, is Jiminy Cricket, that, that he interacts with. He's been alone on an island for a thousand years, so at least he's had a companion, which is, which is this little tattoo. And the tattoo actually, um, maybe, actually, we can see into Maui, into actually his, more of his good nature um, comes out through the tattoo as, as we see Maui kind of struggling with his impulses and his, sometimes his negative impulses are going one way and the tattoo is like, no, 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 you've got to do the right thing. And, and uh, a lot of times the tattoo wins. And the great thing about this was we were able to use hand-drawn animation to bring this to life. Eric Goldberg, who animated the genie and Lewis and, uh, you know, and Princess and the Frog and uh, so many other things, just one of the greatest hand-drawn animators in the world. Uh, this gives him an opportunity. He's supervising and doing much of the animation of this mini Maui character who's animated on paper, like all the classic films, but then through the wonders of technology, he's literally mapped onto this CG moving Maui character and deforms as, as his muscles flex, the, the tattoo also deforms, but it really, and then they found a way to make it look like it really sits under the skin. It's sort of subsurface, so it really looks like it's inked, you know, not just on him, but sort of underneath the way a real tattoo works. So it's been a great blend of hand-drawn animation and CG animation. Did you know that Star Trek Beyond is the first Star Trek film ever to be shot mostly in Vancouver, British Columbia, and not in Hollywood? All existing sets, including those of the Starship Enterprise, will be rebuilt from scratch in a large studio in Vancouver. Do you think we will be able to tell the difference? Click here for more cool videos. Thanks for watching.